All righty, Patidi, we are back. And that was a brilliant interview we just had from the young doctors, both Greg App and Robin Gibbs. And now we have a surprise interview, which I didn't actually mention before because... Because it's a we, surprise? Exactly, it's a surprise. <laughs> now we have Karen McDermott in. And if you go ahead, Karen, I'll let you introduce yourself. Hi, yeah. Karen. Hello. Thank you guys for having me in. Surprise! Surprise! <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm from the local area. From I live down in Waikiki. Um, yeah, it's not too far. That's good. Mm, absolutely adore. Rockingham Beach is my favourite place to be. It's where I go and zen myself out. So, um, yeah, I came, moved here 13 years ago, started writing, fell into publishing, and have had a lot of um, success helping people get their stories out into the world. I absolutely love what I do. Well, we, we can start almost from the beginning. Where did you come from 13 years ago and what made you come here? Well, I came from Northern Ireland um, 13 years ago, 35 weeks pregnant with my third child. So I waddled here. Oh. Um, <laughs> we knew no one and had two, two nights booked on the Great Eastern Highway and that was it. But we absolutely were we're supposed to are here and done exactly what we're supposed to do. Hubby's a bricklayer, so he got to work straight away. Oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah, and I had room to write, so I started writing for nice. my kids initially um, to share with them stories about Australian animals and things like that that they didn't really add to boys So at the time, and they didn't understand Australian animals, so started writing stories about that. Ah, did you nice. actually write in Ireland as well, did you? No. No, so no. Australia actually influenced you to write. Absolutely. I Look what it. happens in the land down under, right? Exactly. As <laughs> soon as my feet touched this soil, I just got really creative. How many That's books it. have you written and pub published? Yeah, of my own, about 40, in all different genres. My big catalyst was when I wrote my first novel in 2010. It was called The Visitor, and um, I wrote it in 30 days during NaNoWriMo, which is Novel Writing Month. Um, and I had no right to be even choosing to do that because I had just had my fourth child. She was four weeks old. But um, I said to my husband, you're not going to have a wife for a month <laughs> 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 because I'm going to write 1,667 words a day for 30 days. I was still wow. a mother, still made sure the kids were all good. But And I did it, you know, I did it. So, yeah, the power so of intention. So was, was the book a very good seller, was it? Mm. Well, the book itself um, ended up being a finalist in the Reader's Favourite Book Awards. Nice. I self-published it, but it wasn't a great publishing Yeah, that was in experience. 2017. Yeah. 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 Just to well, get that far is an impressive achievement anyway. Yeah, yeah. But I, I learned a lot about publishing, so I ended up. It was a catalyst into publishing. Yeah, for me. definitely. Yeah. So, what what was the book about? The book was ca kind of came from an epiphany. Um, I had had a double miscarriage in between my boys and girls, and it really hit me. But there was never any support about it. So I um, I was here about two and a half years when I had this big aha moment whilst watching Whoopi Goldberg on The View when she had uh, a, cop a celebrity TV couple in who had just endured mar miscarriage and the, the woman who was there, she was ob obviously still very distraught and Whoopi Goldberg just stopped the show, turned her back to the camera and said, I'm going to tell you something that I tell all of my friends who endure this, that this was a visitor that came to visit you uh, to yep. let you know to get back onto the right path in life Aww. and when you do, your gift will come. And I was like, oh! <gasps> Yeah, that's what I my heart needed to hear because I never knew why me. Why was it me? I was totally healthy. There was no reason why. So yeah, yeah, quite quite an inspiring moment. So, so is that is that why is that is, was it that a start a chain reaction to like why you believe time and circumstances and is that where it started from? Yeah. Well, before I wrote the novel, I had actually started on a spiritual writing journey, and a lot mm -hmm. of my. Um, I was writing for a website, a local website called Building Beautiful Bonds, and a lot of my um, articles were getting picked up by the local Universal magazine, Universal Minds magazine. And so I was going on a spiritual journey, but when this aha moment came, I was like, people have to know about this, and a blog post isn't enough. So I, I wrote a fictional novel. I had never written fiction before in my life. And it just, you know the way everybody says there's a book in you? Yep. It just... Like, I didn't even know what characters there were going wow. to be two days before I started. So it was just spontaneous. You've got to do this. You've got to get the message out there. And yeah. It just goes to show when people overthink things, it can be a block. I didn't overthink. I just got to the job and I, d and I did it. So and that's, that's where you are, your spiritual or 
awake or wokeness or whatever yeah. it comes from, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So you you've got like heaps of messages, and you're you're quite into, let's see, or oh, spiritual awareness and yeah. stuff like that, and you you give out a lot of positive vibes in your books don't you absolutely i'm all about um this i love a nice living a nice high vibe life yeah we cannot have a positive and a negative thought at the same time so i choose positive it's all a choice so i also have seven life philosophies that i live by and i'm writing individual books on each one and th they're helping people and um, trans transcend from not having an open mind to opening their mind to endless possibilities yeah. because if anybody i push the boundaries of life <laughs> every single day <laughs> i push the boundaries of life but i have i enjoy my life so much but i inspire others to enjoy their life as well you know we all go through crap times i went through crap times but when we learn the lessons we're supposed to learn in them and turn them into positives we can just live the highest version of ourselves so it's like the, the yin and the yang, where there's a negative, there has to be a positive. And yeah, and you choose. That's right, yeah, you, you choose to put it out there. That's that's awesome. Yeah. That's, so you went through a lot of philosophy things as well. Have you, have you done any research on philosophy? It's so yeah. funny because I, I used to study writing and I never really got writing. I had a really, I did not enjoy my English teacher at school. I went to an all girls convent school. I don't I think anybody enjoyed their English teachers. <laughs> he, he just turned me off of English. And, um, but it's funny because one of my friends said, if Mr. Jones knew now that you were writing and publishing books. <laughs> but um, yeah, he's, um, writing is, is something that just, you know, I, I remember doing a course and the, the teacher kept saying to me, you're very philosophical. And I did not even know what philosophical what? meant. Yeah. I had to Google it. I was like, what does <laughs> philosophical mean? And, but yeah, I, I, um, I went through a bit of a rough time in life. I had a, about 14 months where I endured PTSD. But I call it my cocoon period because I had been lucky enough. I'd worked in mental health for four years. So I knew it was happening to me. I didn't like it. Not one bit, but I knew it was happening. So I rode the wave. I did the inner work I needed to do, and I come out like a butterfly and have not stopped since, and I don't intend to either. That's awesome. So does your husband, like, fully back you up right from the very start and stuff? <laughs> He's been on a journey. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> oh, God, love him. He says, I didn't marry your writer. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he's he's there now, which is good. I, I was just very adamant because I'm very connected with who I am as a person and what I want out of life. And th I'm just glad he's now on the on the journey with me. So and our kids, you know, we have six kids. So yeah, so it's a busy house. Do any of your kids actually do any writing? Do they? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. My eldest son, who's just about to turn 25. He's my office manager. He works for oh, me. Oh, wow. wow. That's yeah, good. Yeah, he's amazing. And he and he hasn't told anybody this yet. So sorry, Dylan. <laughs> he's about to finish his first novel. It's kind of like a Game of Thrones kind of thing. He's built a whole oh. land out. and Yeah, he's very smart. Nice. And all the other kids, they think that writing and publishing books is totally normal. So they have little books all around the house. You know? So are these books that you publish and your son Dylan, are they actual hardback books or the EPUBs? Oh no, books everywhere. Oh, that's we have good. distribution into stores and everything. That's good because there's a lot of digital media out now. Yeah. So are they available on EPUB as well, are they? Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's good. And with Serenity Press, uh, which is my traditional press where we do children's books and fairy tale retellings, we actually brought in, um, we were innovative and have just brought in audio flip books where we get oh, our yep. authors to read because they're not big fiction and novels. Yeah. <laughs> we're able to get our authors to read it and have the flipbook experience with the audio going over it so kids can get on their iPads and the author will read it to, to them. That's good. Mm. Yeah, my wife actually reads a lot of books and she does that. If she's traveling in the car or something like that, or well, not that you're supposed to, but <laughs> if, if she's just having a chill out doing the dishes, she'll often put an, an audio book on yeah. there or the audio read. It's, it's, it's the best way to be <laughs> because everyone's into movies now or games and stuff like that and not a lot of people are into books. Now, books are the way to be because that opens up your imagination, which opens up the spiritual awareness, like you say, and advances your mind to be positive. It's total escapism as exactly. well. Exactly. It's amazing. And and I always say there's so much power in a story, whether it's a fictional novel, whether it's a non-fiction, whether it's a children's book. You know, at 
it gives you escapism, it helps you heal, it educates you, or it gives you a beautiful moment to treasure with your child, or they're going to learn and get educated through right. it. So it's, books That's are it. so important. Whether they're, I'm also a print book person, I love a print book, but I also love listening to audiobooks, especially when I'm learning something from. That's it. Like you say, it's the escapism because all today's stresses in lives, especially with lockdowns and stuff, you really do need to escape the reality. <laughs> it's another world, so why not go there? Hey, you know, exactly. <laughs> it is. It's it's fun. It's fun. It's nice going there. I've so been writing for like over twenty years. <sighs> Just writing, though. Have you published? None, not <laughs> yet. But I'm. I want to do that soon. Um, Say yet. You will be. Yeah, we'll have a talk. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. No worries. Absolutely. All right. So tell tell me about oh, let's say your second book because the first one was an experience to learn. Mm-hmm. Now the second one, you obviously would have went in there and said, right, I've done it once before. I learned this. I learned that. How did you go with your second one? <laughs> well, the second one, I had my own press, but it was funny because I um, I went to write the second novel in the series, uh, and it was supposed to be The Memory Taker. And in the first, you know, I always talk about a spiritual reason around why things happen, and The Memory Taker was around dementia, Alzheimer's, and things like that. And th- the messenger comes and visits five people and goes on a journey with each one of them and then has their own journey. That's always the, the, ah. the format in each of the books. And um, and I don't even know where that form I came from. I just went with it. But for the me- the memory taker, it just wouldn't come. I was like, writer's block. I don't believe in writer's block. What uh, is this? Yep. It wouldn't. Come. But it was because there was a book to come in between, which was called the Wish Cover. So it's kind of be careful what you wish for. You might just get it because yes. people make wishes and they don't understand that if they don't make room for what they want in their lives to come in, other things have to push away, and sometimes yep. it's not worth it. So. Um, it's kind of on that kind of... Uh, so it's almost like a, a magic, isn't it? A spiritual and magic. Yeah. Oh, well, I, I own the Making Magic Happen Academy. So oh, there you go, there you go, yeah. it is. Yeah. Yeah. Making Magic, what is that about? Well, I started a group and it's, it's now called Life Magic Mastery with KP Weaver and that's where I hang out. We do gratitude every single day. It started before lockdown, which was really interesting, but we kept it going and every all the feedback um, came back that... Everyone was so grateful to to get whenever that message popped up because it pulled them back to the essence of something good in the day. You know, because a lot of people had not so great days during knockdowns and things oh, like that. Oh, of course, yeah. And we have people from all around the globe in the group and things. So it was. It's just one of those. It's where I, t- you know, chat to everyone about my philosophies, share my thoughts, and um, you know, daily teachings and things like that. Yeah. Wow. Where, where is that? It's on Facebook. It's a Facebook. Oh, so group. it's on. Yeah, it's a Facebook group, and then because um, we're all what the book that I'm writing now is called The Gift and Gratitude, so it's book five in the series, and um, so yeah, I talk about what happened in the group and things like that, and how because a lot of people had different experiences in there, and I invite people into my group. Are you aware, do you know Elizabeth Gilbert? No. Eat, pray, love movie. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah, Elizabeth Gilbert mm-hmm. from Eat, Pray, Love. She actually um, is in book two of. The, she's in the power of knowing. She submit, you know, she allowed me to use a piece of her writing because okay. she wrote on knowing. Ah. So I wanted to show knowing in motion. So I always invite people who represent that and who've lived it. So you, you've met a few famous people, haven't you, as well, with through your travels and stuff, and you've even met one of the royals, I believe. Yes, I use my <laughs> knowing to attract ah, the Duchess into my publishing press. Um, she's amazing, Sarah, Duchess of York. Um, we have a 22 book deal with her with Serenity Press, and we've just about to publish book five. So oh, beautiful! Yeah, um, it's r- it's a real absolute joy to work with her. She's all about kindness and sharing beautiful messages with the world, and she's the most loveliest person ever. So it's lovely to team her up with illustrators, and some of our illustrators are local. And it gives them an opportunity to really have a platform to grow and shine from. We've also brought Budgie down under. Do you remember Budgie, the little helicopter? <laughs> yeah, oh, I do remember that very vaguely. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. How much does it cost to like publish one book? Oh, it depends. It depends. If you're doing a children's book, you have to factor in the costs of the illustrator. Mm-hmm. And then with children's book, we print overseas. So we print in bulk overseas, have them shipped in, distributed, all of those kinds of things. So there's a lots of different dynamics mm-hmm. um, and different distribution channels that you that you um, 
come in through. So, and for novels or, or non fiction, twenty thousand dollars rent. <laughs> Well, for a children's book, we always start at 15. And yeah. then, because you want to take in PR, you want to get some visibility, because there's no point in having a book and nobody knowing about it. <laughs> you know, So there's loads of different types of, um, you know, aspects to it. But we like to go global as well. So we like to have a bit of a global vibe as well. So yeah, growth is always our thing. And um, for novels, the big thing is, is editing. You know, oh, you, you yeah. want your words perfect. So editing, structural, copy edit, then a proofread, then so cover do you, design. Do all you get somebody things. else to proofread in that, do you? Oh, yeah. I, I, I don't mean that in a sort of naive way. I mean, yes, I can gather you would, but is it a complete outside source, is it? Oh, well, we have um, a team that works all the time with right, us. Yeah. But then we also have, you know, we outsource to different people. Right. So we have like rights managers, PR, editors, you know, we, we outsource. But a lot, of, a lot of our team are local. In advertisement as well, of course. Yeah, that's yeah. the PR, yeah, and the that's marketing. Right, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. It's, that's, that's, uh, it's, it's, it's can never be a, headache, a dull moment. <laughs> yeah. Well, how does, how does the rest of your family take it, like your parents or something like that, or the, you, your immediate family? Have you got brothers and sisters? I'm the eldest of six. Wow, so that's... So uh, three girls, three boys. Well, well look at that, you've got six kids as well. I've got uh, six is my number. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't having any more. <laughs> but um, my um, my mother I uh, was has been an avid reader um, yeah. all of my life, you know. And I never remember us reading. It's very funny. She, <laughs> I remember books coming in through, you know, and these subscriptions coming in. I'm, uh, she has these ama- this amazing collection of red leatherback Barbara Cartland books and I'm like they are mine please yep. leave them to me <laughs> <laughs> so I was home a few years ago and I was checking in with mom and then I looked over and there was mom sitting reading one of my books it was the most profound experience oh, I can bet, you know yeah. because <laughs> obviously she doesn't live here we had to go to Ireland and stuff but when I go to Ireland it's funny because I we hire a castle in Ireland that's close to my mom's house and I bring a load of uh, authors over and they're all amazing. We have the most amazing experience. And the Earl still lives at the castle, and he sh- shows everybody an amazing time. Aww. That's cool, yeah. Sounds it is amazing. Like it changes people's lives. Yeah. yeah. I think Ireland definitely itself changes people's lives. It's so country out there, you know. <gasps> so much crack. <laughs> C-R-A-I-C. It's an Irish term for fun. Yes. <laughs> I was going to say, I was just about to explain Crackers. that. <laughs> Crackers. <laughs> oh, that's yeah, good. Exactly. Crackers. Yes. Well, fun. It is. It's so much fun over there. Everybody prioritizes joy. Well, you sound busy and you sound satisfied. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That's Wouldn't good. have it any other way. <laughs> so, are you writing another book at the minute? I'm always writing. Always. When I write, I get up at 5 a.m. So, I'm a 5 a.m. riser. And I like to write at 5 a.m. because it's when I'm most connected to a dream night state and the words flow. Yep. That's because right. as you get into the day, yeah. The logical mind starts to impede on it. So, so that, you know, that's your witching hour, as they say. That's my bewitching hour. So that's what get <laughs> people get to read is that part of me. <laughs> so it's just, just as you're waking up from a dream or something, you go, oh, I must write that down. Yeah, well, sometimes, and a lot of my authors, this happens to them, they get woke, wakened up at like 2, 3 a.m. in the morning and you're going, really? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Please let me sleep. <laughs> yeah, but if you get an inspired thought, you have yeah, to. Yeah, that's, that's what Isn't I do. It? Yeah, yeah, I've got all that. I, I've got all that written down with diagrams and little how. So it's all sort of like there. It's just ready now to just to put into chapters. You're ready. You're ready to go to the next stage. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Twenty yeah. years, goodness me. Yeah. Do you know Think and Grow Rich? It took him twenty five years to 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 write that book, Napoleon Hill, and because he interviewed so many people, and then Sherlock, there's what? How many billions of copies sold across the world? That's oh. it. Yeah, it it can come down to it. Only takes one copy <laughs> to be that particular one that sets you off in motion. Mm-hmm. The one that. Well, it's about my right life. It's, it's really. It's mm-hmm. not. It isn't. Yeah, it's about my life. What I want to do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm intrigued. <laughs> I want to read it. <laughs> there you go. It's about me. <laughs> well, most stories are based. You know, people write the write what's what they're what's familiar to them. So mm. usually, there's a lot of truth. Yeah, even that's fictional it, novels. That's yeah. You know, writing everything <laughs> down. I'm, I'm that's like, good. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> no tear. Of getting advice from a professional author. That's good. That's good. Uh, so, what's your newest book about, anyway? 
Are we allowed? Are we allowed to ask? Yes, absolutely. Um, well, I have a few on the go. Um, we have a children's book series called uh, Minky Monkey Meets. So Minky Monkey is a cheeky monkey who. He's actually got his own little Instagram account. <laughs> so a children's book? Yeah, when, okay. he, when he, he's, he's the alphabet job buddy, so he goes and meets all of these job buddies and learns their job. And um, and so he's actually, a, a, we've got a plush toy made of him. And so when I meet one of my authors or whatever, I even got a picture of him with me, with Elizabeth Gilbert when she was in birth. <laughs> so I send him out to get pictures with famous people because it get, creates awareness around it. But it gets the conversation going. So my illustrator's up to, I think she just done Ivan the Ice Cream Man. There we go. Oh, nice. <laughs> but yeah, my next book is, I've just finished The Law of Love. And it's all about attraction and how that loving energy is the most powerful energy of all you do things through that channel you it's like a super fuel for life so mm -hmm. well, that's cool that's that, that yeah. mm -hmm. you feel that don't you yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and i and i sing of it and i wake up of it mm -hmm. yeah. and that's it we, we all <laughs> need to speak about it and let people know how powerful it is and it's a choice again has anybody ever offered to put a book into a movie yet in, in uh, one of my authors? Yeah. Well, we have explored and have had a few, um, you know, but it is, uh, we hope to. We'll set the intention mm. and make that happen. I'm all about setting powerful intentions. And That's when it. the time so, uh, is right. So when the time is right, yeah, you just, it's it's sort of in motion. It, the, the theory is in the air. Yeah. That's what There's you no reason why not, you know, yeah. especially when publisher and author get together and then maybe producer, you know, anything's possible. Oh, that yeah. sounds excellent. Oh, Ronnie, really? so have you got any more questions, Fatima? No, unless there's any, something that you want to share. Um, no, no, I just come in to chat to everyone to say hi. Um, and yeah, if anybody ever has any questions about publishing or writing or anything yeah, in definitely. the local area, you know, come and find me. I'm happy to get a coffee and have a chat. Oh, <laughs> I'll take good. you up on that. Yes, Aaron. not even no problem whatsoever, <laughs> honestly. Thank you. It That's was uh, cool. good chatting with you. Nice meeting you. Talk soon. Yes. And I think we'll sort of end on that bit and we'll have the song by Silverchair called Tomorrow. All right. Enjoy.